All right. So uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Khadija, a member of Wiki Club, Alikar Muslim University, and I'll be your host for today's conversation hour. So first of all, I welcome you all to the 21st DCW Conversation Hour, a monthly open conversation by DCW or Durban Community Wikimedia, which is a recognized affiliate of the Wikimedia Foundation. DCW focuses and supports the recommendation of knowledge related to global Muslim academia, history, culture, heritage, etc. on Wikimedia projects. It works at a global level in all languages. So in this 21st edition of TCW Conversation R, we have our very special guest with us, Rajit Sharma, who works with Movement Communications Team at Wikimedia Foundation. He is the Senior Global Movement Communications Specialist, South Asia, Wikimedia Foundation. Moreover, he has formerly worked with Save the Children India in several capacities for over six years. As the name suggests, impactful communication strategies. The theme of this conversation is to explore communication strategies with the example of various Wikimedia communication plans. So uh, before I hand over the mic to our guest, Rachit, I want to share a disclaimer that this meeting is being recorded. And um, Rachit has a presentation to talk on. After which, we'll have an open Q&A where you can fully ask your questions, doubts, or share feedback towards the end of the session. So now over to you, Richard. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Khadija, for, for the lovely introduction. Hi, everyone. Um, um, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. And thank you for spending time uh, on making time this, this Sunday evening to be a part of this uh, the 21st edition, which is also um, a great number. We. I mean, it's a great testament to all the, the work that has been done uh, by uh, by the by the admins, by the moderators, by the key personnel of DCW. It's uh, for twenty one editions you've been hosting this, and I I've been following a lot of the work, and I know that in each and every edition you have different speakers who come in and talk on different topics, which are uh, are something that hopefully would would add value to a lot of the work that you've already been doing. So just wanted to congratulate uh, everyone uh, for this journey <clears throat> and uh, thank thank you all for, for having me here. And I hope uh, um, over the next few minutes, the conversation that we have would be impactful because that's, of course, the, the topic. If, if a session on impactful communication strategies is not impactful, then it's clearly something missing over there. Um, so with that... Um, I just wanted to confirm very quickly if you can see the screen and if you all can hear me okay before I move forward. Perfect, I see a thumbs up. Thank you very much for that. So um, as, as mentioned by the moderator in the beginning, uh, this is a session on impactful communication strategies. Um, it's going to cover two broad aspects. One is what are some of the strategies that one could keep in mind uh, to have communications that are impactful. And the other is what are what is the benefit of communicating impact as well? Uh, both are a little distinct. One is communications in general and how to make them impactful because we all uh, communicate every day. We speak, we write, we, we email, we post, we do so many things as individuals. Uh, and of course, it's 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 communication is about getting the message across to to whoever is the intended audience, and that would be the impact of it. But the other thing, which is a bit more uh, <clears throat> a bit more related to to the Wikimedia universe as well, would be how to make uh, um, what would be the benefits of communicating. I see, uh, and I've seen historically in a lot of the previous organizations that I've also worked in that. A lot of organizations would do good work, and I'll take the example of Save the Children, for example. Lots of work, lots of programs, um, you know, lots of impact for, for children in different aspects. But a lot of that would not be communicated to the audience. A lot of that would not be communicated outward. Um, and that that is where the, where the gap ends. It's amazing, the work that we all do, the impact that we make, the the momentum, the movement that we gather, <clears throat> but equally important uh, would be to communicate that and let people know 
uh, what is the work that has happened, what I'm, what have we been doing? Uh, because with that, there are certain benefits. So we'll delve a little deeper into that as well. And um, I also am not getting into uh, because of, of course, the paucity of time. Uh, and to keep it short and crisp, we won't get into a lot of the details of different platforms available. I think we all today know what are some of the different mediums of communications, at least from a uh, from a project and from a uh, from a from a community perspective. So this will be more going to focus on strategies uh, and and impact and and the benefit of of these things. And at any point, if you have any questions. Uh, we I'll, I'll pause in the middle as well. We, of course, will have time at the end. But if there's something that you would like to add, please do drop a message and I'll be monitoring the chat. And we have moderators here as, well, here as well. So hopefully the idea is to make it as interactive as possible. Um, just to highlight the quote you would read on the bottom right, which is good communications is as stimulating as black coffee uh, and just as hard to sleep right after. Hopefully, because it's late, we will all be going back to sleep uh, at some point soon. But that's that for me, you know, in a very informal manner, sums up communications, whether it's verbal, whether it's nonverbal communications is supposed to have that impact. It's supposed to be like that stimulant. It's supposed to be like that coffee. And um, and that's 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 the aim. And that's the hope here. I'll just uh, move to the next slide in which we'll just cover broadly the agenda that we're going to uh, <clears throat> we're going to be following today. We will have, of course, we've done with the introductions and the broad objectives of uh, of the session. We've covered that. We'll then move into key components of communications. We'll move into the five C's of communications, and we're going to kind of keep it mix of general and also focus on the Wikimedia uh, ecosystem as well. Um, so so that we kind of uh, have the best of both worlds in a way. Then we move to the importance of communicating impact, which is kind of the other aspect about one is strategies, one is uh, the importance of communicating your impact. We'll go through diff, which is the movement blog. We'll have some examples as well. Uh, and I would love to spend more time on this, which is the movement, which Wikimedia movement blog. Uh, some activities, um, I've created a samples communication plan, so we'll go through that. And then time in the end for open discussion. So there's there's a lot on the agenda. I'll uh, try and keep it as crisp and uh, quick as possible. And hopefully you won't be like the monkey on the right hand side uh, during this. Uh, and hopefully this will be an engaging conversation. So please, um, do do you know if you have any inputs, any thoughts, emojis, comments, etc. Welcome on the chat so that I also don't uh, um, you know become like the monkey. So moving forward, uh, in the beginning, um, I wanted to just spend some time on what are some of the key components we keep in mind while planning any communications. Uh, this is basically. If you look at it, it's like the framework of some of the questions you might want to ask yourself um, while you're crafting your communication strategy. So these are some of the key things to keep in mind. Who is the sender? Who, whether it's an organization, whether it's a project, whether it's an individual, and if there are any other contextual things to keep in mind about the sender. For example, um, a message sent by an organization would tend to be more formal. A message sent by a social media influencer might be a little informal, for example. So who is the sender? Keeping that in mind is very important. Uh, and also, for example, maybe if it's an email, if you're writing a script for someone, because communications works in different ways, so who is it that you're actually representing? Who will be the, quote unquote, the face of the communication? Uh, of the communication? So... That's one of the things to keep in mind. What is the medium? Whether what is what are the languages? What are the platforms? So how are we communicating this message? So for example, today's session is the sender is Rachid. The messaging medium is Zoom. The tools used are virtual conference technology presentations, websites, and the language is largely um, English. So keeping that in mind is also very important because this is how you kind of move a little closer to planning a strategic communication uh, uh, workflow. Then external factors. What are some of the external factors to keep in mind? 
again uh, it could be political it could be uh, it could be the time of the year it could be maybe some some um, some um, crisis has happened maybe something happy is happening what are some of the things that might impact the consumption of 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 your um, of your campaign of your of your communication so again <laughs> for example a lot of brands and a lot of um, organizations would do communications around around the festive season in festive season is different in different countries so festive season in general uh and then depending upon the organization they would maybe have offers or sales or talk about projects like at save the children or some other cha- a lot of non profit organizations use that time to celebrate something called the joy of giving week wherein you ask for donations from people because that's that's the period so what is the timing what are the external factors that's something which is also important to keep in mind and of course who is the communication for who is the receiver who are you communicating to so for example again coming back to this conversation when i spoke with afi and when we were kind of just strategizing about this session uh we try to keep it balanced between wikimedia movement and something which is a little more widely applicable why because there are people on this call who might have different levels of understanding about the wikimedia ecosystem but overall generally you might uh, have a better understanding of of uh, of communications in general so the idea was to not go too deep into the wikimedia ecosystem and the the names and the the acronyms and the terms etc and to keep it more uh, keep it as gen- general as possible so who is the receiver of the communication and it's important why did we do that because you want your message to be consumed to be engaged to it whatever communication you're planning or whether it's a blog or a video or a or a call like a virtual call etc you want to ensure that it's tailored to the receiver as well um that while you all of course keep all the key components in mind that the receiver is also very important a uh, key component and then in the end feedback channels <clears throat> what are some of the feedback channels we want to leave with the people if there are someone if there's someone who's not happy with the, the communications or the content thereof could are you giving them a pathway to get back in touch with are you giving them a pathway to to let you know what they feel or what they felt whether they liked the communications whether they thought something was missing so for example it could be as simple as by the end of this i will leave you with my email id it could be if you're writing a blog in the end you say if you want to get in touch with us xyz other ways so these are some of the things to keep in mind to kind of also close the loop it's more about if you adopt the first four uh, four components one two three, four components this is basically you've tailored your message and you've sent it and then you should also be open to receiving feedback right and that's very important in today's day and age where we want to close the loop we want to ensure that we are not just communicating one way but it's two way it's 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 active listening we are also open to listen so these are just some of the components uh, to keep in mind <clears throat> while you uh, plan your communications uh and if we do adopt this approach for diff- for different things whether it's a blog whether it's an overall strategy whether it's a video etc this broad framework would really help you come to uh bring bring a impactful uh, communications plan or initiate it together so moving forward while you are um planning that while while you've kind of kept some of the key components in mind what are some of the questions you should ask yourself as the communicator when i say communicator I, i'm saying if you are the person of designing a plan or an initiative etc what are some of the things you want to keep in mind as well these are uh what do you want to share what's your main objective having a having that at the back of your mind like when i came here or when i was coming up with this presentation uh and when afi and i were talking we had certain objectives which is what khadija at the beginning also laid out so that was our that was that's always at the back of your mind right like this is what you want to achieve so what is your main objective and what do you want to, who's your main audience who do you want to share it with who are the people so keeping that in mind is also very important and having that very clearly detailed out for example 
an example of the Wikimedia ecosystem. If you're planning communications with the community, you would probably have more technical information and some some terms and jargons, which we know that the community would un, would know. But if you're sending the same thing out to the external audience, you can't do that because they won't understand, right? So it has to be more explanatory. You have to give give more details, etc. So knowing that and keeping what your who your main audience is in, in mind is, is extremely important. Again, where will you share the content? Whether it's a video, whether it's in social media and social media also is so bifurcated now, right? Like you have short videos, you have posts, you have static posts. What is it that you're doing? When is the best time to reach your audience? What is the timing? Um, when is your audience more active? What are some of the external factors? Again, when you look at these questions in line with the key components, you will see similarities because these are, they both work together. Uh, when is the best time to reach your audience and how will you measure impact? And this goes back to the feedback thing. How would you know if something you've done is successful or not? Is when you receive feedback, is when you have feedback pathways embedded in the comms that you're doing. So those are some of the questions in, uh, to ask yourself and some of the things to keep in mind as well. Moving on. And this is not my. Uh, this is not something I've come up with. This is a very standard. Uh, and in the in the presentation, I've dropped a link of the reference as well, so you could take a look. A lot of people talk about the five C's. Some people differ. This is the one that, in my opinion, uh, would make uh, most sense. Again, this these are all inputs to keep in mind while planning any communications. Keeping in mind that you want impact at the center. So the five C's of communication. And if any of you feel like there should be another one, please do add that to the chat and we can, we can have a quick discussion on that as well. Because as I said, different people have different approaches and thought processes. Uh, <clears throat> but let's go through the ones that we have on screen uh, at the beginning. Your message should be clear. Clarity is very important. What are you saying? How are you saying it? What is the key message that you want to drive across? Having that clarity is very important. Not having multiple messages in one communication is, is not ideal. Um, if you, for example, write a blog and talk about 10 different projects, the retention of that would be very limited. Talk about one, talk about two, or talk about a theme. So how you kind of bring that clarity is very important because every message will also have an objective, something you want to achieve. And having that clarity and having a clear message would be very, very important. Uh, we'll move to credible, something which is very, very relevant to our uh, movement as well. Credibility is at the, at the center of it. So is your message right? Is your message uh, leveraging the right information? Are you giving the right facts? Do you have the right sources? Uh, this is relevant for non-Wikimedians as well, but of course for us so much more. That um, that credibility has to be at the center of it because if as a as an individual <clears throat> or an organization or um, or a community, if we are found on the wrong side of you know information which is not credible, then you lose credibility as well. So credible information builds credibility, and that's that's at the center of. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that the, the message. Um, so, uh, so having that, uh, the credibility is, is very important. Having a complete message, um, again, a message usually would have the beginning, the core context and an end, right? And having completing that, completing the loop as, as we also spoke about in the messaging is very important. So, uh, you know, having a complete message, having a complete, uh, telling the, the entire story, talking about. Uh, talking about it in in its holistic capacity in uh, is going to be very important to aid the impact of your communications to keep it cohesive. Cohesive is also very important. Uh, cohesive communications also binds uh, us together with the reader. So if our if our communications are cohesive in nature, it's more about the impact that we also are leaving on on the reader and on the consumer of of the message and having that that cohesion, that cohesive messaging is, is, is super important as well. And consistent, 
Um, a lot of brands do this. I'm sorry, I'm bringing brands in. Uh, a lot of charities also do this, where in January they're talking about X, Feb they're talking about Y, March they're talking about Z. By the end of it, a year has gone by and you've talked, spoken about 20 different things, which may or may not work. I'm not saying that that's a good thing or a bad thing, but having consistency is very important. Um, so, for example, if if at the Wikimedia Foundation we talk about Wikimedia projects, that's consistency. The projects could change. But if we suddenly talk about something else, then that would be, that's good to know. Um, but if we start talking about something else, our audience will be confused. We'll be like, like for example, if we suddenly start talking about telescopes and uh you know technology and and the universe on this call you'll be like but we are here to talk about impactful communication strategies right so how is how is that related so you have to be consistent you have to follow what what you set out to achieve and uh, and this is both as individuals as um as organizations as a community as well you want to kind of um, you want to kind of uh, keep consistent with the message. So these are some of the five C's that I think uh, would be more relevant. You can add more. You can talk about um, you can talk about compassionate as well. Compassionate messaging is also something which is very important. And if maybe or any one of you might have some other uh, C's that you would like to share, so please do add that in the chat. Uh, and uh, I tend to, and I'm just going back to the message because I really uh, love the uh, Tamjeet basically came across. So I, in my presentations, tend to use images which are a little unrelated. So this, I do something which is different. I'm very consistent in that approach, though, um, because it tends to start such conversations, which is which is always great. So hence the monkey and the telescope and some other pictures in the being curious curious is 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 also one very common uh, commonly found uh, uh, see like you have to drive curiosity in your uh, in your um, in your readers like what what am i seeing here what what is happening here and that curiosity really drives engagement as well so curious uh, is is a great great uh, input compassionate is also great <clears throat> so these are some of the additional c's Today it's five, tomorrow it will be seven C's. It's basically what works for us. But these are frameworks, some of the frameworks to keep in mind that would really help us kind of craft a communication strategy, craft a message, uh, or craft a plan. So moving forward to the next slide. <clears throat> so now we've spoken about key components. We've spoken about the five C's. We've spoken about some of the questions to ask yourself. Um, which is more general, like in terms of general comms. Now we kind of move a little closer to the Wikimedia ecosystem uh, and talk about the importance of communicating impact. Um, before I go in that, this image that I've put uh, for me signifies a lot with reference to the topic. If you communicate your impact and if you prioritize communications as 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 uh, as a as an important task, as an important activity, you will not be alone. And that's that's kind of the picture, in a way. Uh, wherein the, the key idea of communicating impact and communications in general is to make sure that we have the partners, that we have supporters, people know who we are, what we do, what are we trying to achieve, et cetera. And that would really help us not be alone. Or if you put up a blog and let's say 200 people read it, 200 people now know your story, which is actually amazing, right? And we are not alone. And today's day and age, digital age, it just also has become so easy to achieve that. And that's that's something I would just wanted to say the, uh, at the outset. Um, we'll spend some time on this. And <clears throat> while I will take examples of the Wikimedia ecosystem, it's also something that is more widely applicable in terms of some of the some of the importance uh, some of the objectives of communicating impact so i'll start from from the top advocacy and awareness i think what we've spoken about thus far in this conversation is about how can um, 
communications really help us advocate for our project, advocate for our community, advocate for our needs from resources, advocate for gaps and filling those gaps, etc. And awareness and advocacy and awareness go hand in hand. So the more you the more you put out there, the more is the chances of more engagement, more awareness. With awareness comes advocacy. So with constant, sustained and consistent communication, you would be able to achieve advocacy and awareness. So, for example, by the end of this conversation, hopefully, we would have achieved um, and a, a little more awareness and some advocacy. I would advocate for communication, right? And that's what I'm advocating for. And that's that's what we want to achieve by the end. Uh, <clears throat> we will then talk about motivation and satisfaction. We kind of, you know, we are all, there are so many volunteers in the community who who do so much work. We we are on calls on a Sunday evening. We, we host meetups. We edit. We create more engagement. So much work. And that motivation and satisfaction when you, you know, put a communications out there or when there's a video or a blog or a communication strategy that you've created there, it also adds to the motivation and satisfaction, not just of the sender, but of the receiver as well. Recruitment and retention, very relevant for our, uh, for the movement, wherein we are constantly looking for growth and engagement of the movement. How do we get more people in? How do we... Um, uh, reach out to newer audiences. How do we get young people in, and so much more, right? And communications and telling the impact that you have would be very, very important. And I'll give you an example. Um, there was a series, and I can drop a drop a link of that um, here um, that I uh, did for the Wikimedia Foundation called Behind the Screen. We'll we'll talk about. I think I'll show a blog of that. It was initially supposed to be just two or three regions. By the end of it, when people started saying different regions yeah. wanted to come, right? Different, uh, different uh, people wanted to join. And by the end of it, I think we got like seven different, uh, seven different blogs and videos out there because it really helped with, uh, with furthering the engagement. So you see something, and then you see this over and over again, and that's the impact that it could achieve. Um, the same way when we go to a, for example, an educational institute, we host a conference, uh, sorry, we host a session, et cetera. That helps, you know, that is also communication and that will help you with recruitment and retention of, uh, of contributors and of community members. Scaling impact. When we do communicate, we communicate at scale, we can, scale our impact by getting more partners, by getting more supporters, by getting more people out there to engage with us and know about us. Um, sustained engagement, regular communications. We keep the conversation going. We're on the 21st edition of the DCW Hour, right? And this is this is the best example of sustained engagement. You all have attended these calls. You've gathered the right speakers. You've... Uh, you know, been able to achieve so much momentum. 21 regular calls back. That's that's incredible. And that's a true example of sustained engagement. And and and, and hopefully in, in we'll be celebrating 100th uh, call in some time. Um, and then there's accountability to self. Um, when Afi and I were speaking, we we had a we, you know had a quick chat about a particular blog. Um you know, and Afi was like, yes, I'm also thinking on those lines and we just had an organic conversation. Um, that is also a certain, I mean, accountability to self. As someone who is probably working on a project, is probably working on a, on a campaign, an initiative, working on community models and growth and engagement. We also, when we put out communications, we're also setting certain accountabilities out. Like sometimes we say, this is our annual plan. This is our strategic focus areas. These are what, this is what we're going to achieve. And that then becomes accountability to ourselves, to our readers, to the consumers, and to our community. So these are some of the things to keep in mind um, in terms of the importance of communicating impact. I am not an individual who likes wordy uh, slides and that's why I like talking and, you know, that's why you don't see a lot of words here. 
but you you would be able to refer back to the recording. And of course, I'll be more than happy to have any conversations with as many of you all about about more on on these uh, these uh, topics and uh, uh, on these topics and these objectives. Um, and then now moving forward, the moment I said I don't like text, I put up a slide with a lot of text. Um, we'll go through an example now. Um, just you know, by show of hands, maybe you could use the hands up. How many people have heard of slash seen a Wiki Minute video? Great. Amazing. All right. Perfect. So I see uh, a few folks with uh, who did not raise their hands. So I'll just talk about very quickly. A wiki minute video, as the name suggests, are one minute videos that has been made by the communications department. <clears throat> um, that basically talks about different elements of Wikimedia and the projects and how it works. And the idea is to provide, and it's available in some languages. The idea is to make it available in more. And I know some people have reached out to me for adding more languages. So we're really trying to figure out we can do that easily so that anyone and everyone can add your own language. As of now, it's available, if I remember correctly, in about 10 or different languages and subtitles are available in many more. Um, the idea is that there are, as of now, total 13 videos and it's growing. So we will have different batches, etc., cetera, to, to support various communication initiatives. So for example, if you all go to an XYZ college to conduct some outreach, you could leverage and use these videos to, in a very quick, crisp uh, minute, explain that particular concept. So this kind of becomes like a teaser. When you're talking to audiences which are unfamiliar with the Wikimedia movement, with Wikimedia projects, they often lack certain context around it. And these videos basically really help to bridge that content. So, uh, sorry about that. I will just skip and... I'm going to do a quick test. So if we can all confirm if you can hear the audio and I'll mute myself as well. Before I a lot can happen in a wiki minute, like the 60 seconds of Just to check, was the sound okay for everyone? Perfect. Great. So I'll, I'll just play a few, right? We'll play maybe two, three. And if there's anything in specific you want, please let me know. But we'll play two, three, and then we'll come back. A lot can happen in a wiki minute, like the 60 seconds of everything that happens on Wikimedia projects, or even the time it takes to answer, how does Wikipedia work? Wikipedia is a free encyclopedia everyone can edit. It exists within the vision of a world in which every single person can freely share the sum of all human knowledge. Every month, nearly 300,000 volunteers, people like you, come together from all around the world to write, edit, update, debate, and fact check the content that makes that vision come true. These collaborators, contributors, and creators curate and compile information that's accurate, neutral, and well-sourced, and free for anyone to access and use. Which is probably why Wikipedia is one of the first places people go when trying to learn virtually anything. The articles they edit are read more than 16 billion times a month. Yep, billion with a B. And the knowledge they create often becomes the source of information that powers some of the world's main search engines and virtual voice assistants. And that's how Wikipedia works in only a minute. A lot can happen in a... A lot can happen in a wiki minute. Like the 60 seconds of everything that happens on Wikimedia projects. Or even the time it takes to answer, what free knowledge projects does the Wikimedia Foundation support? This might surprise you, but Wikipedia is only one of 14 wiki-based projects. There's also Wikimedia Commons, the world's largest free-to-use media library that includes images, photographs, videos, and sounds from all over the world. And Wikidata, a database for Wikimedia projects that's open and free, with files that people and machines can view, edit, curate, and use. MediaWiki, the free and open source wiki software that powers Wikipedia and many other sites, from pop culture hubs to cancer research. We can't forget Wikisource, a free library of original texts and historical documents, from poetry to government records. Or Wikibooks, an open content textbook collection anyone can edit. There are even wiki-based projects for news, course materials, definitions, quotes, species, travel, and project coordination. 
And those are the free knowledge projects supported by the Wikimedia Foundation in only a minute. Great. Uh, I hope, uh, I mean, I wish I could play more, but uh, and the, the link is here uh, in the slides. You sh you'll be able to see. So in terms of some of the videos, how is misinformation addressed on Wikipedia? How can you join the Wikimedia free knowledge movement? What is the Wikimedia free knowledge movement and so on and so forth? So if you see, a lot of these videos will make the lives of anyone trying to explain what the movement is all about or trying to work on some growth and engagement fairly simple, right? Um, and again, you this what I played was English. You have various subtitles, etc. available. You can change the subtitles. All of these videos are on comments, and I would really urge you all in some of your engagement uh, moving forward, please, if you haven't already, use some of these videos. Uh, what We've heard some great feedback about them, but that they can really um, start a conversation. So for example, if someone plays the how many projects, and if you open that, a lot of people go like, oh, Wikipedia, you know, is not the only one. And which is what, you know, a lot of us, uh, so many of us work on the different projects. And it's when you go to fresh audiences, they don't know. And telling them about this is, is really good. Um, and then moving back to, you, Looking at the videos that we have, <clears throat> just very quickly, these videos can be used for advocacy and awareness. They could be used for recruitment and retention, motivation and satisfaction as well, accountability, breeding that accountability. So if you look at these these videos and if they are being used and if the community is using them for the outreach, it will help in sustaining engagement and scaling impact. So this was just a quick example I wanted to share with you all uh, for um for contextualizing this particular slide i'm going to move a little quickly now uh just a note of the time um and now talking about diff and again a quick question how many of you have heard of diff raising hands all right i see one hand two perfect Thank you very much for sharing. So I guess this is also something which would be uh, which would be uh, useful. We are now getting into some of the tools of communicating impact in specific to the Wikimedia movement. But when I do talk about the things that I will, Diff is based on WordPress. It is as similar as a Medium blog or any other blogging uh, website. So for those of you who might want to uh, adopt the same approach beyond would also be fine, but this in specific would focus a lot on how you can use, how can you tell your story and make a difference as some wordplay that I've done here. Um, diff, very simply put, is a blog by and for the Wikimedia volunteer community to connect, to share ideas, to share updates, to also learn ideas from different people. Diff is maintained by the movement communication or by the movement communications team, which is the team that I'm from. So some of my colleagues do maintain that. And uh, it covers stories from all over the globe. It has videos, it has pictures, slideshows. Anyone can add content to Diff. And uh, it, it's a very interactive way of uh, sharing your story. So for example, if you have at the end of a year an impact report, which is more a report, maybe you need it for a grant uh, report, or maybe you need it as a more formal meta update, you can take pieces of that and update that in, in a creative and more compelling manner, which could not just be used to share that within the movement, but also with people that you might engage with in terms of partners, supporters, and external people. Very quickly, this uh, quarter early this year, We've seen every quarter, we see about 400 posts coming up and that's growing. We see multiple views. We see a lot of views from almost 45,000 visitors, over 1,000 subscribers. These are all community members. So if the numbers are what they are because these are all community members. And that's something which, which I wanted to kind of uh, share with you as well. Like most of the subscribers if, would be people who are part of the movement. And I'm sure many of you are subscribers as well. 15% of the posts were posted in languages other than in English. 
Diff supports multiple languages. You can translate any blog oh. as well. And a lot of blogs are translated too. We get about 4.2 different posts, blogs a day. Diff also has a calendar. I would rec- I would urge you all to use that calendar and add your own events to that calendar as well because it kind of becomes a nice um, movement event calendar of sorts. Why should you use this? Some very quick things. You can announce your project. You can announce uh, an activity that you're doing, get, get participants, scholarships, etc. Spotlight your own personal stories. Spotlight, you know, you all... Uh, as a part of DCW, would have your own stories, your own journeys. You could use that to talk about your personal journeys uh, in relation to the Wikimedia movement. Um, <clears throat> any institutional knowledge you want to talk about, some of the activities, you want to talk about the 21 different uh, conversation hours that you've done, you know, you could write a uh, blog over that. Minor, some other reasons, brag. It's always good to talk about some of the work that you've done, some of the amazing things. So when you say 21 or 22, conversation hours that's that's an amazing update and that's definitely something you should share <clears throat> help the reporting process if you have a formal report like a grant or an end of the year uh, community report you can kind of make that a little less formal and add that on this as well and it also adds in personal development if there's some of you who are planning on um, you know exploring writing skills and and um, and writing in general, if you want to practice that, diff is a great way to do that. Um, when you write, go back to you know the key components and the C's, et cetera, that we spoke about. So all of those things are here. So I will leave this particular slide because we've covered most of this before. And I will now show you a couple of diff blogs. Um, I should zoom in. This is one uh, that I put up a while back on South Asia as a region. It basically, again, there is a picture. It has links. You can add images. You can add headers. There are a lot of things you could do. You can you can add links, and we all love links. And at the end, you talk about you have bullets, etc. So there are a lot of you know you can play around with it and make it as interactive as possible. And then in the end, you kind of leave people with. Uh, this was part two, so in the second one, we, we left with, with emails, etc. as well. Uh, moving to beyond programming, this is for uh, something we wrote for the women's camp that happened again. It talks about, this basically talks about how the, con- the conference of the women's camp went beyond traditional programming. And it talks, speaks about the different things. And this is now being used by different conferences as a, as a, as a base of some of the activities, right? So another one, and then one here from, which is a very, very good looking and informative and interactive blog uh, by the very own Afi and, the, and on the community, wherein you kind of look at the, the text, you look at the flow, the pictures, the so you kind of, you have the captions which are there. So it's a complete blog. You have a video as well, which is there. So you have like a complete blog over here. So these are just some examples. Uh, just to say, um, this is diff, diff.wikimedia.org. Please do take a look and do engage. And uh, I am always happy to help anyone with their diff uh, journeys. Uh, so if any one of you is thinking of a blog, uh, I'll be more than happy to help. We will probably include this activity a little later, but I wanted to ask you all, and it'll be great if you could uh, keep this in mind. We'll come back to this in the Q&A maybe, because there's just one more thing I want to cover, and I know I'm a little over time, is what type of content would you like to read? Yes, uh, all of these, this entire presentation, I'll share it with you all, or I'll share it with uh, the moderators, and they can share it with everyone. This is This is... This has all the links, so uh, we uh, this will all be with you. Um, <clears throat> so we'll come back during the Q and A. But what sort of content or or blogs would you like to read? So this is a question I will ask you in a bit. I will now very quickly, and uh, just keeping a track of time because I know uh, I've spoken a bit too much today. Um, this is a slide template. Oh, sorry, this is a format. I want. I wanted to just very quickly share with you all, and something that you could, you could use. You could adapt. This is a sample, so it's a draft. You could change as well. 
uh, wherein it talks about the two different types of communications, which is proactive and reactive. One is what you do and one is what you react to. So it talks about that, talks about some of the communications templates. So for example, if any of you are working on um, your communication strategy or communications plan, this sort of a template would really help uh, put it all together. So it talks about overview, backgrounds, what is the purpose and objective, what you're trying to achieve, the target audience, who do you want to reach out to, who are these people, the general audience, partners, press, media, etc. Again, these are all templates, so you could move, delete, add, etc. <clears throat> what are some of the goals and outcomes uh, you want to achieve? And it's ideal to be smart about it, which is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Um, what are some of the key messages that you want? And then we get into the strategy. What is your overall strategy? What are you going to put on digital media? What are some of the channel events, et cetera, that you're uh, thinking of doing? What do you need? Do you need a video? Do you need graphics? Do you need a report? What is it that you need in terms of assets? What are the timelines? The racy Daisy is a framework. I'll, I, I should add a link to it. It's basically who's responsible, who's accountable, who's to be consulted, and who's informed. This is a very detailed template. It only goes to show that these are some of the headers and some of the things you can keep in mind. And you leverage this template as a base for when and if you're working on a large communications initiative. If one does this, then it was bound to be impactful. And that's why I wanted to just very quickly share it in the end. It also has space for monitoring and evaluation, conclusion, etc. So, and all of the details are mentioned here. So you could take a look. And again, if anyone is interested in knowing more, I'll definitely uh, be happy to kind of go through it in detail. But this is the strategic communications template, <clears throat> which also is linked in the document. So you can all make a copy and use it. Uh, and that brings me to the end slide. And I do apologize for being a little over time, but we hopefully will have sufficient time for Q&A. Uh, wanted to leave this, uh, I love this quote, which is the coming together is the beginning, keeping together is progress and working together is success. I thank you all for having me here. I thank you all for uh, listening and engaging to this conversation. I really, really hope this was this was the starting point of something. And I hope some of the things that I spoke about would uh, ring true in your daily lives and in, in the future as well, uh, whether it's in the movement, whether it's outside, but communications is, is, is something that I strongly feel about. I, it's not just uh, a job for me, it's my passion as well. I, I, I love communicating with people. I love changing perceptions. Uh, and thank you for coming together. And now let's work together and achieve some success. Uh, thank you very much. Back to the moderator to coordinate uh, uh, on the Q&A or I'm happy to uh, take any questions if there's any. Thank you, Rashid, for this wonderful session. It was very insightful and knowledgeable. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. much. Now, I would like to you know open the floor for questions. So if anyone have any kind of question or doubt or query, you could ask, uh, like unmute your mic. And you could ask that. Otherwise, uh, you could put in the chat box, and I'll read it for you. So, uh, first of all, I want to ask a question that uh, a lot of people still believe that uh, Wikipedia is not an authentic source. Like, even I was uh, doing an assignment. And it was mentioned the guidelines that do not use AI or Wikipedia, uh, use authentic sources. So how to tackle that? Uh, that's a that's a great question. And uh, if you actually look, uh, it, uh, it's why, why is this not? If you look at uh, there is actually a video as well which talks about how is misinformation addressed on Wikipedia. So I would urge you all to quickly take a look at that. Wikipedia in specific uh, does not ever say it's the single source of truth. It's it's the right thing. It's a secondary source platform. The sources uh, are in most cases not academic, uh, academically accepted, etc. But 
they are secondary sources. They could be media articles, they could be academic research papers, etc. as well. So Wikipedia in specific is something which um, can give you a starting point, can give you a lot of the information, can give you a lot of, uh, of the right uh, approach and uh, things, but there are, it is, it, it is not something that is self-proclaimed a single source of truth. And this is not me saying it, this is, this is the volunteers who are saying this. So it is a secondary source platform. Sometimes sources change. Sometimes sources may not be as biased as well. So there are, um, it's not a, it's not a perfect machine. And that's, that is the beauty of it as well, because it is a wiki. The term wiki, I'm not sure how many of you know this, but the term wiki means a collective. So it is a collective and it is all about one person doing something, another person coming and making it better, etc. So there are always uh, things that could uh, not be ideal, uh, but they get corrected. And that, that's the beauty of our community as well. Um, so while academically speaking, it might, in, in some cases, might not be the go-to thing, but if everything on a wiki page would be cited, now whether that source works for you with reference to what it is that you're doing is it, is 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 possible? Maybe it is a article which could be relevant. Maybe it is a research paper which is relevant. Maybe it's not. But it will be cited. It will be well sourced. Some of the large articles have over hundred references because every statement. It is not a place for subjective statements because you have to give um, um, sources for everything. And that kind of uh, I hope that answers your question in a way, but. There, are, there is a way misinformation is tackled with Wikipedia, but it also is an iterative process. It's constantly evolving and improving. And that's 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 by design. Um, so I, I, I really hope for that, that answers the question. Um, yeah, it makes sense. How, next, uh, another participant is asking, uh, how can we overcome communication barriers? <clears throat> that's a great question. I would... I mean, if if it's okay, and please feel free to type it. Like, I want to know, like, what barriers are you referring to? It could be, are you talking about access barriers? Are you talking about individual barriers, resource barriers? Because it could be, could be a lot. Uh, but in general, I would like to say, I think if you keep communicating to uh to your audience, keep creating your audience, keep creating the communication, it does take a lot. Writing a blog. As, as as you saw on this, it'll, it'll probably take you maybe an hour to put a diff blog together um, and then sharing it with people. You could do the same with videos. We all have videos or, you know, we all have phones nowadays. We can take videos on our phones and kind of do some basic edits and put them out there. Um, there are some communications that need resources. Maybe resource is a barrier. Maybe time is a barrier. And that's, of course, there. And I'll give you an example. When I used to work with Save the Children, where we created a campaign without any money. We basically went to people. We said, this is our campaign. This is what we are doing. It was basically a Word document we went to multiple partners with. And two years later, people started giving funds to us for that campaign. Um, so if resource was what you were referring to, then that is definitely something that you can overcome. And communications actually doesn't need resource. It needs a thought, it needs some planning, it needs the core content, but communications at the base of it, at the core of it, doesn't mean it. You can go, we've done this, right? We are here, there are about 15 odd people on the call. We've, we've been communicating, we've been doing this, right? And uh, by the end of it, I'm, I'm, I'm here talking to, we're a total of 14 people as of now uh, on the call, and we've been communicating resource-free in a way. In terms of monetary resources, etc., time effort is is something that one would have to put, but the outcomes of that is something that would be great. So I hope that answers your question. But if if you have any specific barrier you're thinking of, I'm happy to address that as well. Yeah, if anyone has a question, please unmute your mic. Um, one question is like. Um, 
could you share uh, your thoughts about uh, the role and types of listening or receiving in communication process or communication from the viewpoint of the listener? Sure. So if, if I understand uh, your question, uh, Aparna, correctly, is about thoughts on the roles and types of receiving in communications processes. So from the receiver's point of view, right? From the receiver's point of view, I think it's more about being open. As a receiver of communications, we need to be open, but we also want to just... There is a lot of information out there in today's day and age, right? Uh, there's just so much. There's just so many, like there's news and there's um, updates happening. Things in our personal life are happening. There's just so much. We are we live in a hyper engaged and content heavy world as of now. Um, and as a listener, it's very important for me to to ensure that. I also give myself time and I focus on a couple of things. And I'll give you an example. In terms of charities, you have child rights charities, gender-focused uh, charities, you have climate change. You have, uh, in terms of causes, you can talk about animal uh, welfare as well. So there's just so much, right? But can you really cover all of that? Can you really pay heed to all that content of all these different topics, etc.? It's It's not humanly possible. So it's as a listener, it's important to make sure we focus on certain topics and themes. And of course, they evolve, they keep changing. But if we keep our, um, if we keep too many speakers in front of us, we will hear different sounds and we won't be able to concentrate. And that's why different organizations also have different segments of audiences. Because that there would be a group of strong supporters for XYZ theme and a group of strong supporters for ABC team broadly. And that's that's something to keep in mind as well, even, even when sending information that the receivers may, may not be the right receiver as well. And that's okay. It's okay to tailor your audiences. But as a receiver, going back to your question, I think zeroing on a couple of inputs, like where is it that we want to receive content from is important. Otherwise, in today's day and age, you will be bombarded with content all across and content which you may like, may not like. So I hope that answers the question. So if there is any more question, so you can ask me. I hope that there is no more questions. So I'd be concluding and um, so as we come closer to this enlightening session, I'd like to extend my sincere gratitude to our esteemed guest, Rajit Sharma, for sharing his invaluable insights and a detailed presentation with us today. I'm certain this would be beneficial for all of us. And thanks to all the participants for your active engagement. I must acknowledge that your presence has truly made this session successful. So yeah, thank you everyone. And we'll see you in the next conversation hour. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for having me. Thank you uh, very much. Enjoy your evening.